I came across this video effect the other day and wanted to figure out how I could implement it myself. So today we'll take a look at how edge detection algorithms work, the basics of image convolution, and we'll implement the code to do it all from scratch. We'll need to start by talking about tensity, which is just the brightness or darkness of a pixel in an image. Edge detection works by trying to find areas in an image where we have big changes in intensity. The greater the change in intensity, the more likely it is that that portion of the image represents an edge. This will be easier to do when the image is grayscale, so let's implement that first. Let's try and figure out the intensity of this pixel. We can start by breaking it into its individual red, green, and blue components. A naive way of implementing the grayscale algorithm would be to take the average of these three color values. The code is pretty straightforward, as you might expect. We'll do a little bit of setup here, and then we'll iterate through every pixel in the image, grab the RGB values respectively, take their average, and then update the pixel's color. That'll give us an image that looks like this. It's a good start, but it's not quite right. The reason for this is that the human eye doesn't perceive all colors at the same intensity level. For example, the maximum intensity of green looks brighter than the maximum intensity of blue to the human eye. Instead, we can use this formula which weights the red, green, and blue channels differently based on their perceived contribution to brightness. The weights here are chosen to approximate the human's eye's sensitivity to these different colors. We can now see the differences here between the average grayscale and luminance-based grayscale approaches. Now imagine that these values represent the intensity of different pixels in our image. There's no RGB values here. It's just intensity values ranging from 0, black, to white, 255. Now, visually, we can see that there's a big difference in the intensity values along this line, so it's a pretty clear sign to us that we have an edge here. Now, let's see how we can make our code find it. We'll use image convolution, a fundamental operation in image processing and computer vision, to implement edge detection. Think of your image as a grid of pixels and the kernel as a smaller grid with specific values, but more on this later. To use a kernel, we place it over a pixel in the input image and multiply each value in the kernel by the corresponding pixel value in the image under the kernel. We'll sum up the multiplication result to get the pixel's value in the new image. I know this number is larger than what a pixel's value could be, but we'll address that later. Now we repeat this for every pixel in the image to generate the new image. By changing these kernel values, we can perform image blurring, sharpening, and more. Today we'll explore the Sobel operators, developed by Erwin Sobel and Gary Feldman at Stanford's Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. The Sobel operators are actually two kernels, one that measures changes in intensity in the horizontal direction, and one in the vertical direction. The horizontal kernel gauges left-to-right intensity changes by subtracting left pixel values from the right, while the vertical kernel measures top-to-bottom intensity changes. You'll notice that in this kernel, we've set our center pixels to zero, so they don't contribute to the calculations, since we're only interested in seeing intensity changes around our pixel. Remember this example from earlier. If we see a large number as a result of subtracting the pixel values on the left from the right or from the top to the bottom, then we know we've found an edge. So, now for every pixel in the image, we'll apply the horizontal and vertical kernels independently. From here, we'll need to calculate the magnitude of the gradient, which is simply a measure of the rate of change of pixel intensity in an image. In other words, the greater the magnitude, the more likely it is that a pixel is on an edge. At this point, we know the rate of change of intensity in the horizontal and vertical directions, and we want to figure out the unknown magnitude portion. So this all comes down to using the Pythagorean theorem. Notice here that by squaring these values, we're getting rid of any negative values that may have been introduced in earlier calculations. So let's start substituting in our values. Remember, the higher the magnitude value, the more likely it is that we're looking at an edge. Now, if this magnitude is greater than some threshold we define, we can consider that pixel to be a part of an edge, and we can mark that pixel in the new image as white. 
Otherwise, if it's less than the threshold, we'll mark that pixel as black in the new image. This thresholding step allows us to highlight only the most significant edges in the final image. For example, here's the same image with different thresholds applied. As we reduce the threshold value, you'll notice that more edges are included in our final image. Let's wrap up our implementation. We'll start by introducing a blurring function. Pre-blurring an image before edge detection reduces noise, fine scale variations in pixel intensity, and creates a more stable image for edge detection. So we'll start by grabbing our grayscale image and iterating through all of the pixels like we did before. And now for every pixel, we'll grab the surrounding ones, add up their grayscale intensity values, and then we'll take the average, which has the effect of blurring the image. You'll notice that this is just the implementation of the box blur kernel we saw earlier. Now here's the final code for our edge detection. Just like in the other examples, we'll start by iterating through all of the pixels in our blurred image. Then we'll combine the kernel values with the pixel values and calculate the gradients and magnitude. Lastly, we'll check if the magnitude exceeds our threshold, and if it does, we'll paint that pixel white in the new image. I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know what you think of this new format and if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover in this style. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.